to talk about geometrical challenges for the string landscape. Let's first see whether the sound works, the sound on. Okay, good. So good morning and uh, thank you very much, Johannes, for the uh, very nice introduction, the invitation, and I it's a great pleasure to speak at this uh, mathematical, more mathematical and physical conference. So I'm uh, in a slightly difficult situation. Probably what I'm going to say is going to be um, much superficial for my physics colleagues who I see here. And the majority of the mathematicians is probably going to be um, yeah, too physical and uh, too quick. Um, so, but nevertheless, I think it may be useful to have one talk where uh, one might see uh, what physics implications the math you're doing in my test and what challenges of the physics. And so uh, let's use this more as an occasion to have some discussion and ask questions and so on. So please interrupt me with questions. If, uh, uh, not supposed to be very formal. I'm not going to spend uh, in the original results, but more like the view of the institution. And in part, it goes back much further. All right. So the title, title is uh, Geometrical Challenges for the String Landscape in the I have a I guess. Um, and so the plan is I will very briefly first review the landscape of spring landscape as it uh, was accepted uh, for the maybe last or 20 years. And um, then this focus on problems which have been discovered in the aftermath of the Wasita and other swampland infections, i.e. more recently, and maybe even physicians have heard about the swampland thing being a big thing in physics recently. And so I will focus on things which are close to my heart, which I think are important, which are the singular bulk problem of the uh, the petrol constraint of a large volume scenario, and the petrol conjecture, which is maybe the more mathematical of these uh, issues, uh, which could, if true, which I don't think it is, at least in the strongest form, could be a showstopper for the whole landscape. Okay, so let's start. Okay, thank you. Now it works. Okay, so let's recall. Uh, or, uh, yeah. So uh, we start with uh, string theory, and uh, for the purpose of the talk, it's going to be mostly the, the supergravity side, so the tangy supergravity. Uh, for which we will look at solutions, the field theory, I and mean, the and all of these problems, they know what the field theory is, the classical field theory. Uh, and we are going to look at solutions uh, on, a, on a space, which is uh, Minkowski space times X. And X is going to be a Calabiao. More precisely, it's going to be a Calabiao oriented space. The Calabiao uh, modulus some uh, discrete final field K. Uh, it's a so called Calabiao oriented field because uh, together with this, Involution in space, uh, there's an orientation reversal of the string, but this will not be too important for the purpose of the work. Not emphasize this. So, and the visualization is, I mean, the simplest we can have is a uh, torus P2 by V2 gives you such a space which uh, has been called pillow or ravioli by some. Uh, it uh, has four uh, conical singularities which are uh, called in this context identical planes, and depending on what this is going to be done in the Calabiao, and then uh, depending on the action of the specific group, the singularities may have different four dimensions. If they can be points in the so it uh, has a full four dimension, or, or like this four dimension complex one, uh, that's exactly what Okay, so this, is, uh, so this space is basically a Calabiao to this important issue. And uh, then, of course, this. Uh, on this space, we are imagining that there lives a field theory uh, with 10 D supergravity. And um, so there are metric fields in particular and uh, undersymmetric tensor fields. And um, so the four dimensional effective field theory then is supposed to describe our real world based on this geometry. Um, obtain a certain field content, including in particular, not only, but in particular, the moduli of the Calabiao X. This is now not pure math in the sense that there is really a dynamical metric field here in 
10 dimensions in string theory or in topography, and then in 4D, the dimensions of the Calabiao really become dynamical fields which we could observe in our real world, which in principle are uh, strictly massless scalar fields, and which are thought to be a severe problem. And the reason for this. Uh, but let's at the moment, uh, we, we come to that at the moment, let's write down the four dimensional Lagrangian governing the theory. And uh, the key point of this is the kinetic terms of the moduli. And uh, this, uh, they have the, they the form of a, of a Taylor metric and moduli space for the complex structure part, on which I think for Z, and the Taylor part, which I call T. And uh, this, this T is not why the mathematical key to complexify version and the simplification and its origin in certain integrals of P form fields like this V here uh, in the uh, so it is really now also the complex version is truly physical and so on. And uh, yeah, so we can go on. And then with this uh, Taylor metric of Taylor potential, which you can be written down in a very well familiar standard way. I mean, the standard structure moduli. It's uh, this lock uh, of the integral of uh, omega by omega bar, omega being the polymorphic uh, tree form of the Calabial. And uh, then, of course, it can be rewritten in this more explicit form using the period vector, which I will denote like this. So, uh, one period is normal to unity, then there are uh, the uh, z's and uh, the pi. Uh, which are actually I'm wrong here by one. Never mind. Yeah, like a number uh, so uh, basically, the key point is that there are only n or h to one independent complex structure moduli z, and then there are complicated periods, which of course we uh, know much better how to calculate. Uh, and uh, in addition to this, there's a similar Taylor potential for the uh, um, uh, for the Taylor moduli, T, uh, I'm specific, I mean, they are dip, depending on which supersymmetry, which particular string theory. Let me focus on one example here without going into too much detail. Um, I take the case where it's defined in the way I wrote down here. So it's the large volume limit. Uh, T are the uh, volumes of two cycle moduli. And uh, the uh, kappa alpha beta gamma are the intersection number of the corresponding two intersection number of the corresponding four cycles. So uh, this is uh intersection terms of the seeds and then the seeds are related to the cow, which are the volumes of the four cycle model. And for a reason of supersymmetry in this particular model, I'm considering the good variable are the cow, uh, which are the real part of T plus P bar and T is the real complex variable. So it's slightly indirect, but in the end, it's not important for what I'm going to say. It's not, not too important. Uh, there's a, in principle, well defined function. Uh, there are further corrections. I mean, you can, uh, you, know, you of course, know that by mirror symmetry, these two things are related. So here, I'm missing what is called instant corrections, which are not important in the large volume limit. So this was very, very introductory. Uh, I'm not sure maybe it will be too much so, but I hope, I mean, please interrupt me something totally doesn't make sense, okay? Okay, so now uh, things become, I mean, this is still stuff which you know better than me, but now things become more physical. Uh, namely in the super gravity, in the tendency of gravity, there are also, as I already mentioned, there are form fields. And in particular, there are, uh, Two very important form fields for our purposes, uh, uh, the three form fields, uh, F3 and H3. And it's common or it's useful to combine them into a complex uh, three form, which I wrote down here. And uh, the coefficient itself is also a field, uh, in fact, a combination of the inverse string coupling and the zero form field. So this is maybe more detailed than at the moment mathematicians can accept. So we need, uh, it's not too crucial. Okay? This is this complex field, dynamical, and these two real three form fields combined into this field. Now, what is absolutely important is that this field in the Calabial can take a vacuum expectation value. A vacuum expectation value in the sense that you know, even the, the, the vacuum solution, the unexcited uh, calm world, has a certain value of the field, and that value is called background flux and it's quantized. Quantized uh, 
uh, very explicitly here uh, by, by this F3 and H3 being part of the uh, integral uh, form. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason why this quantum is not important for you, as the, as the world says, it has to be quantum mechanics, this would be a uh, direct effect of uh, the quantum theory. Uh, but that's not, not, not crucial. So we have a choice. We have a choice of taking certain quanta for those fields. I mean, picking, picking a vector in this, uh, huge, in general, very large level. And uh, once this is done, uh, so the first key point is that now the moduli, which we have before take, uh, acquire a potential. So the theory is not anymore just described by these kinematic terms as a physical telemetrics, but it is a so state of potential, which tells you where the minima are and where the real world sits. And this is even here. Uh, in a very compact way, it can, it can be written uh, as this is the inverse telemetric I had before. Uh, so far, sorry, it applies so far only to the complex structure moduli. Which is kind of natural because those govern the three cycles and these are three form fluxes. So it's uh, without going into too much detail how to derive it, it makes good sense. It's a natural thing. And then we have here the covariant derivative of the two potential. The two potential is given here, uh, also known as superfather written two potential. And uh, it's the integral of this complex by uh, the three form flux is omega. And the derivative, the covariant derivative, the covariant depends on the scalar potential given here. So uh, it's a very relatively simple natural expression. Uh, and this can be made very, very explicit because, of course, the W, which I have called Vegas integral, uh, can then be translated to uh, the sigma being a symplectic matrix, matrix between uh, these two vectors. The one vector is built. The one vector which I would call the flux vector is in fact built in two flux vectors, F and H. For the, these are now the integer numbered vectors for the two uh, uh, lattices uh, of the integral uh, three, uh, three form uh, formology I had before. S is still the complex field, pi is a period vector I had before. All right, so now. Uh, comes uh, maybe a key point to think about the potential, you can now um, take two perspectives. I mean, you can think, okay, I just have potential, I mean, if the, the world is going to the minimum, and there's a condition uh, for where this minimum is. And it's equivalent to say that uh, this whole thing is supersymmetric because you are on, on a, on a color Liao in principle, the supersymmetry will be broken by the fluxes, but it will be still restored as a symmetric minimum at one particular point for the complex structure model, like given that these uh, uh, flux vectors are chosen. And so the conditions are here. There are those who are probably everybody who has seen some supersymmetry is the covariant derivative W being zero. In respect to the I, I labeled the complex structure model, and S, S is this one extra field in the string cut. Okay, and this generically stabilizes all these moduli, the I and S. And so the n plus one equations for n plus one variable, and now there are as many vacua as there are choices of this vector f and h. Now f and h are both uh, vectors with the size of uh, harmonic two cycles. Stop. I mean, stop. If anything is possible. Uh, so now, unfortunately, there's even more physics that has to be put in. I mean, I want to at least say where the physics comes from and then formulate the mathematical requirement following from it. So the standard supergravity uh, is a complicated animal. It has more of these form fields. It has an, another five, five form field strength. And this five form field strength is sourced uh, by the flux, the flux meaning the three form flux that was discussed. And it's also sourced by the O planes and also brains, which I will not discuss too much. Uh, which I already mentioned as the single, singular corner of the level down to then sources for the five form. And so the equation, which is basically uh, just like Maxwell equation, is that uh, D star and phi is the sources, and the sources are this combination of the three form uh, field strength and some local contributions, like for J's log and J is the source log for localized. And so there are two pieces which have to add up to zero because this integral uh, of V of something on the complex space is uh, called a, I don't know, anybody, everybody knows what this is, what's a pitfall. 
for the pet code because if you do if you do physics with this, you basically have something you, you, you source a diagram. Uh, you, you have a diagram that sources a certain field with one end. It looks, it looks like pet code. Right, right. uh, this is of course more I'm not sure that Anyway, the stupid word. Uh, so this, however, now is extremely important because it means uh, that you cannot switch on this three-form flux at liberty. You are constrained uh, by this equation. You're not constrained that this, this uh, product of integral of the product of the integer number has to be zero, uh, but it has to be has to exactly compensate what you have in this localized source. And these localized sources are based on geometry of X. Uh, and now it's important that it's really the geometry of X, not of the Calabiao. Because it, if you work it out in detail, it turns out uh, that this can be written as uh, one fourth of the number of so called O3 plays. Those are those singular points which have full co dimension, or really point in the singular point in the Calabiao. Uh, and then uh, the Euler number of the so called O7 plane, these are those which are surfaces with co dimension complex one in the Calabiao. And then there's also contributions from the deep brains, which come together with the old plane, which can be wrapped on the Calabria, which I maybe should not discuss here. I, I, I mean, I'm happy to, to discuss, uh, let's see our time, all the time though. Okay, so there's, uh, anyway, the key point is that given the Calabria oriented code, you have a number here, and then the fluxes are constrained by that number. And there is a, a much, I mean, what I'm going to say next, uh, the most of models and the problems of them are in this, in this uh, so-called type 2 d supergravity. But actually the better setting to discuss it, the more mathematical, nice setting is F-series. And in F-series, uh, one does the following. Uh, one looks actually at the Calabria of fourth world, which is a, a, an elliptic vibration, T2 vibration over some complex space T3. And uh, in this context, this torus vibration actually, I mean, the way the torus literally varies, the complex structure torus varies over the base, uh, describes the profile of this field S, which I have here, with a string coupling in it, uh, which then is not constant. Here for me it's constant, but then F series is not constant, it varies. And in that context, uh, I mean, many things are much more complicated, but some things are more elegant. For example, this localized contribution, that's the, that's the all, all number of the Calabria or four four, which you have. So it's a, it's a single clean quantity, which is not, does not have this other limit. But still, the same thing happens. It limits the flux. Okay, so now we are at the key point here. Uh, so the finiteness of this available end, because it has to compensate this Q, which was a feature of the geometry, uh, uh, leads to the finiteness of the length. And uh, it's famous. I mean, it started a long time ago with Dennis Sachs, who, in my point, was the key paper establishing the landscape. and. Uh, let me mention that Robert Grimm is one of the people who recently made focus on this very important issue of the uh, finiteness. So, uh, sorry, Thomas, I know I'm boring you almost all the talk, but then we can maybe two or three slides which are interesting. Uh, all right. So, uh, this gives you this huge but finite length. No question. Are you ready? Now? So far, we only discussed construction moduli in the optimization. And now I have to turn to Taylor moduli, which is uh, yeah, the, the, the ugly and really physics like part of the talk. But I have to do that because it's somehow very possible with my work. And I think it is the point where, at the moment, the decision is about to, to, you know, to, to be made where the landscape actually is the form the lab with and I think about it exists and whether it's described to the world. And the issue is really the Taylor model, in my opinion. Um, well, it's not completely cool. People who believe in pet code contraction maybe think also connected to the anyway. Let, let's see. Let's see. So Taylor moduli are also important. I mean, and see the story is, is far less nice, I have to admit. Uh, uh, the, the, the big progress came by now uh, almost 20, no, well, it's precisely 20 years ago by KKLT, uh, famous scenario. And the first step of KKLT, uh, uh Carlos Linda Trivedi, uh, so we assume for the moment that construction moduli by the mechanism I just explained is part one, they're just integrated out, they are stabilized, they are fixed. Our Calabiao can only be deformed with the killer moduli uh, deformations. 
And so here's my cartoon of the Calabiao. There are various cycles there. In particular, I draw four cycles here. And these four cycles can be wrapped by something that's called a Euclidean D3 brain wrapped on a four cycle. And in the correct, the brain is dashed because it's really not there. It's something like a quantum effect that the brain occasionally can uh, um, nucleate out of vacuum and disappear again. So it's, it's a typical quantum effect associated forever with brain to cycle and leads to a correction to the superpotential, which you remember was a was flux induced and this was a stupid formula, it's a constant now, and plus exponential. Exponential in Taylor model IT, T governs the type of this four type. I claimed that just a slide for. And again, there's a formula for scalar potential, uh, which now is uh, well, it's actually now the more general formula. Previously, I gave you a, a, a simplified formula, which, which gives certain features of Taylor moduli. And now uh, this is a fully designed formula. It's, it's uh, very abbreviated and has a minimum and can, and can show with this answer that it has an, an ended as a minimum here. So basically now at this point, the following thing happens. The complex structure model are gone. The Taylor model are stabilized due to this instanton effect of a certain point. And uh, the compatification is now, even though I started with the, with this, uh, you know, um, I was basing on myself on Kalabi Yao times Minkowski, but now it's actually Kalabi Yao times individual. That's the solution. Okay, so that's not good enough because our world is not under the sitter. Our world is very precisely Minkowski. If you then look very carefully, it's a little bit the sitter. Um, so, uh, Step two of this famous KKT proposal is uh, that you need to consider the case, which is which is uh, uh, very common, that the Colabiao has a conifer singularity. That was thankfully yesterday already explained and discussed, and many of you know that very, very well. I'm not going to explain what conifer singularity is. Uh, and if, uh, however, together with conifer singularity, there is flux, then uh, on the various cycles of the Calabiao, then it turns out that you're actually not at the singularity, but slightly away from it. And the deformed side, uh, Marcus explains that, what the, what the, what the deformed uh, side is. And so the three cycle takes the finite uh, side, and then actually uh, something else happens, which is now very, very physical, which is called warping. So my picture of the Calabiao is now, this here goes into this. So where you had a singularity, there now emerges some usually drawn like this and called the throat. It's, uh, and this picture is, I mean, it's trying to be faithful in the sense that it shows you what the geometry is, uh, a wave, if, if that were the Calabiao geometry. So this, this is the metric we started with and including this flux in this particular conical situation, the metric changes like that. In other words, you, have, you, you get the so-called warp factor, depending on why, why being the Calabiao, uh, the point of the Calabiao, multiplying the 4D space, so it's actually now not a product, it's slightly more complicated, that's not important for us. Crucially, the Calabiao itself, the compact geometry is deformed by a prefactor, called conformal Calabiao now, and in such a way that this region is extremely over-enhanced, and in fact, this region Part of the, the, the region that the singularity was to, used to be uh, is now uh, it's like a huge potential sink in this Calabiao. We have to think of the Calabiao now as a real space, and that region where gravity, I mean, actual gravity, because there's an actual dynamical metric here, pulls everything to both point. And at this point, you place a metastable, uh, well, metastable in this context, anti dissolver. So you, you add an ingredient. Subject to all consistency requirements of principle, because it's not something to do by hand, it's something that in principle is allowed in the string setting, which will break supersymmetry. Break of supersymmetry into the composite vacuum energy, uplifting, is what the word is, the term is, you from anti dissipator to the super. Technical terms, I just wrote them here. I mean, you hope you know, Clever of Castle wrote the name of this strange geometry, which is, by the way, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, of, of course, you know that the, 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 the deformed conifold is one of the few Calabiao metrics which are known explicitly. And moreover, even the deformed version with the, with the warping and everything is, is fully known. I mean, the metric here is, is, a, is a famous solution, really an explicit metric that solves for the primitive. And this is called the KPV update, Kashu Pierce and So you're going from this situation 
uh, you actually these three under the three potential you you are you adding it you can't avoid it having being this uh, slope and so you kind of con 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 you um, contrive everything I mean I have to use a negative verb contrive here to have a little minimum here somewhere which can only be metastable where you sit and you expect this to be the sitter metastable the sitter long lived metastable sitter describe our real world and that's uh, with, with few variants, uh, one has to be honest, the only thing we have achieved. Today. And that's how we describe the real world of thinking. So it's really very intricate and detailed and painful and such. Coming to the point which you may or may not care, but if you do care, I mean, if strings you in this kind of business is really relevant for the real world, I mean, it can be in many other ways, but this is the best way we understand it. And has, I already said, unsatisfactory. So, in fact, I, I miss saying that. I wrote it down here. For this to work with minimum here, you actually need the W0 to be an extremely small number, uh, which is possible, but I can't do it. You need to choose two slots appropriately. Then um, you have um, this anti D3 uplift follows from the 10D effective field theory. I mean, there's no string of poly suited derivation. It's a horrible nightmare uh, to actually give this. I mean, this, this, this is not useful math. This is something that we really need to, need to, need to do physics. Uh, and now come more recent development. So this and some important variants like large volume scenario, which I mentioned, uh, have remained the main evidence for uh, the three the sitter has been proposed based on this, and the sitter is impossible to matter of principle because people said that this is, this is so unlikely this is not going to work, and only there are good reasons why, why uh, strings here in principle does not have such things, and so on. So, and subsequently, because of this, this uh, kind of counter movement, people have started very carefully to study this construction of this outline, KKLP and LDS. Um, have been have been subject, subjected to intense scrutiny with varying success. So some things uh, it has passed certain tests, and other tests it's about to fail. And so I will focus on what I think is most critical. So, for example, one critical thing is uh, that, as it turns out, you can study parametrically what I mean. This throat region that you have, that you, that you need to break your through the symmetry, has to have a certain size, a significant depth. Because this uplift, I told you, has to be very, very small, not to destroy your reconstruction. Then it has a certain width. Now, this width tends to be bigger than the size of the Calabria. We are gluing some, some, some strange warp width in the Calabria, which is in principle a smaller size. There's a parametric clash here. And I uh, let me draw, redraw it here. So you're, you're looking at something very weird. You're gluing a big stroke in the Calabria, which is small, somehow. This warping function h has to change in a bizarre way from here to here. It turns out we can show this is our, I mean, this is among others, our work that this h of y goes to zero, metric becomes undefined, and you actually it turns out that this scalar potential for the scalar moduli, k of e and e bar, is not calculable. The metric control is lost because you are in a strongly curved regime, even in a singular regime. So uh, the thing becomes internally inconsistent. Uh, and not in a not in a absolutely deadly way. I mean, we cannot show that it cannot work, but uh, certainly it cannot work in a regime when you are sure that all the physics corrections, which are all over the place here, are not important. And then the beautiful mass is still there, but it is not the regime where the uh, mass is. We call it a singular bulk problem, and that people have written counter papers saying that things you will cure it if you look carefully, the singular means you have to all be resolved somehow. I think it's not true. Uh, I have here one slide where I go with you through the parametric analysis. I think I should skip that. I think I mean, I'm happy to start with. Um, so, possibly better shape is a so called large volume scenario. You, so you, see, you, you see, I have to, I mean, people now start adding epicycle. I mean, you have to add epicycle. It turns out, I mean, it's natural that we have more than one kilometer. What I described for this and Calabiao with many from the Tuxa moduli for the fluxes and one kilometer. Now I go two kilometers down. Uh, the kilometer, which I explained to you how to construct from the mass input, 
explicitly in theoretical Abiyao's paper in Swarm, B and S standing for big and small cycles. Uh, this is an important higher curvature correction, which at least in principle I will mention on this. And uh, then you again get, get such a Q uh, potential and due to the interplay of this one can now show that we get an ADS minimum similar with KTLT, but with the following key difference. You now have two four cycles in the Calabrian, and they get stabilized at this ADS minimum such that one of them is exponentially much smaller than the other. I mean, this has proved to be big for, for us to trust the classical geometrical description, but this is much bigger. And uh, explicitly, this volume is exponent of one over the string coupling. This can be tuned to small values using this enormous amount of flux choice and discrete numbers. Uh, but it turns out that this volume here, that we get here is exponentially large, but may, as a matter of fact, still not be large enough for sufficient quantitative control. Very surprising, an important paper uh, of, of uh, In fact, uh, there are various corrections here. I mean, it's a complicated story. And the corrections basically come uh, or they're related to the fact that the action contains not only the actual Hilbert term, uh, but in principle contains many higher curvature terms. So um, these are, of course, not irrelevant and not obviously zero if you have a Calabriao geometry. You know, the ancient flag, you know, the term, the location makes not false. That's all, this beautiful story, all based on this term. But we go beyond this. There's other stuff which you cannot avoid, which can be predict. And so problems arise. Yes. Control means something which you will certainly very much of, of objective. Control means that I uh, have in my equations of motion or uh, in my calculation for the point at which I stabilize my moduli, uh, higher order terms. So I cannot really calculate uh, because I have extra terms in my equation of motion, which I, which I neglect. And I neglect them on the basis on me stabilizing things in a regime where these terms are small. And the regime, being that regime, it's not a mathematical limiting procedure. I have no mathematical limiting procedure because I'm in a finite, I mean, I'm in a theory which is string theory has no parameter. All I can do is choose a flux. By choosing the flux, I'm choosing discrete number that in a some very large set, which is finite. Whatever. And in this, you through this choice, I make this G string, which is stabilized by the part of the equation, small. No, it's not explicitly done, but it should be possible. Then the volume becomes large. Then in this large volume, which I now treat the parameter, I have corrections, which are sub leading, sub sub leading, and so on. And control means uh, that I'm in a regime when these corrections uh, are numerically small. So in this sense, yes, numerical, but uh, it's not really. And it's not really trustworthy numerical, like I have like I have a, a full series, I can sum all terms and look at the first and I can see what the error is. I have the first term and I have a second term uh, being, of which I don't know the coefficient, but I know the expansion parameter is one time. Okay. So now that is, that is the situation, unfortunately. But, but surely, I mean, this is the large cycle. This is a large cycle. Yes, yeah, so surely it's exponentially large, but will be some number of string length, right? It will be many string lengths, okay, but, I will, so, but I will but argue. So, so what is the, when you say it doesn't, I mean, I would be worried about the small volume. That, that, I mean, what you, you say it's not large enough for control. For if, control. if the, the large one is not large enough for control, yes. So there are, what is the, what's the other parameter that makes I sense? Could, I, 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 that was exactly what I was about to explain that. So uh, what happens is the following. So it, it, only in words, I mean, the, we are running out of time, so only in words. And I apologize for, I mean, each of this is a, is a series of several papers, right? I mean, the volume is very large. If the volume is large, the ADS minimum, the minimum value stabilizing, is, is very shallow. It affects one of volume two. So if you want to uplift a shallow minimum and you don't want to, to destroy the hypothetical minimum, you, you need to uplift it by a little bit. Uplifting a little bit means that the throat, which is this, 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 this uh, clever transfer, has to be very deep. 
that requires that you have a lot of flux in your flow. So this number n, the flux contribution from the throat region has to be large. Now, but remember, uh, so the whole thing, so there are curvature corrections. There are curvature corrections with higher terms, which could behave like n throat over volume to the two thirds. So now you have things look and naively you think, okay, things are perfect because the volume is exponentially large and exponentially large in the throat number. Okay? And so you can be sure that for very large end throat, these corrections, which come from the high curvature term, which are of type n throat over volume of the throat, will actually be small. Because this is large and this is exponentially large in n. Okay? So everything is fine. But the problem is then, then you, you work out this formula with all the coefficients. I mean, with all the coefficients and pi and so on, you know. And then it turns out that to gain, go be in the regime where because of this beautiful logic, this is small. This n throat has to be large, but it cannot be larger than n. And n is limited by the available calabria oriented fold geometry. This q kills you. This q prevents you from going into the regime where you think you are safe. And um, focusing on the most optimistic regime, basically where all the flux number that we have is absorbed, is used up in the throat, uh, and also defining this control parameter, I call it control parameter. It's kind of, it is an expression for the relative importance of subleading term in a series, uh, which you draw. Okay. It's like, yeah, whatever, epsilon expansion of theory, and you know, epsilon is small because you want to consider only or the epsilon in that first step. So it then um, there's also the fact that the tip of the throat, I mean the region of the antibrate is, has to be controlled with supergravity. And uh, so then there has been a, a series of papers between us and Jungheim, and we discussed this a lot. And uh, so the conclusion for us is that there is something which we call the large volume scenario parametric head constraint, which gives you an expression of how large your n has to be such that you can be sure, sure at the level of numeric, that the subleading terms are small. And if you put in all the details and the pipes and, 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 and the various coefficients, and there are some, some cutouts from the intersection numbers of the cycles and the xi, which has to do with the Euler character of, of the Euler number of the Colabiao. So let me not go, to, go, to, go there. I mean, we, I think we fairly honestly put in the numbers, try to be optimistic to get here. You need an attachable of order 500 um, to get some. I mean, I, I we chose the quantity a suppression quantity to be five. We said, okay, if a series is good enough for us if you know it goes like one plus one fifth plus one twenty fifth, and so on. It sounds must sound horrible by my definition, but that's uh, it's something that's fake. Okay, so if you choose 10 here, things get worse, but not so much. Something lost or maybe Okay. And now you go back to uh, to mathematics or to, to applied mathematics and uh, ask what people have found in terms of concretely calculating this Q in the Calabiaus oriented Calabiaus oriented that you have. And you get numbers like this. So for the pure Calabiaus oriented which I've explained, it's 225 and actually borderline too small. So it's not that you can say, oh, all is lost, and not, not that you can say you're safe. It's kind of, you know, borderline, maybe okay, or not okay, depending on how you feel that day. And then things become much better if you allow yourself more complicated geometries. I mean, the, the seven brains contribute, if they start to do crazy things on the Calabriao, you can choose such geometries. You can go up to 3000 here. Uh, if you do F theory, this number is known to go up to 75,000. So you're in perfectly good shape. Here. But then these are not the, these are not the models where all what I described before works perfectly. There are now other issues which in principle uh, make me lose control because here, for example, the string coupling cannot be small at all, which is my main small parameter. And here the string coupling varies crazily because the, the seven brain sources, there are some, I mean, so there are non-trivial profiles which I did not include in my calculation. You cannot include your calculation because you don't know the Kirby-Yau metric. So it's, uh, it becomes a nightmare. And so, yeah. Uh, a clean mathematical question. What is the maximum Q in a pure Kirby-Yau identical 
which for the most of the world. Not only, excuse me. Not for your drive. People have just thought that it's a bit. Uh, more physics question, how to how to get better control is these better habits where you know that they keep it a lot. Okay, head pull pop. So now comes the, now comes the, 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 best, the, the best part, okay? Uh, the best part, I mean, yeah, the best part for you because maybe this is the part where really, you know, it's linked to contrast more. So uh, we are driven the following situation. We have this color below the certain flux in the bulk table from the suction model, a certain flux in the throat, which I just discussed, uh, we need to be very large, we need to have it very large for control. These two numbers end up, add up to something which I call n, and this n has to be smaller than q max. q max is this uh, uh, yeah, uh, number of O3 planes in this case, or, or Euler number of O7 planes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Just this question of what is the maximal Q for color BL. So the question is you have color BL with holomorphic involution. And you want... has, no, has no Q, as you know, right? Has no, Q no, no, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Just trying to. Yeah, explain. So, explain. Some idea, okay. So, explain, explain. Some idea what the Q is. So you have a color BL with a holomorphic involution, and you look for, roughly speaking, the homology class of the, very roughly speaking, the homology well, class. I had the formula the... somewhere, right? Here. So, so if, if we. So the fixed point locus. In the simplest is case, these guys are. Two and four, so, six. so cross this out and make it one fourth here. Then this is the number that you want to calculate. Okay. okay. Cross this out and make. Uh, the simplest case, these are these sets are related to this space. Uh, uh, so then you can remove this and uh, have this uh, number of O3, and uh, this is uh, uh, one fourth. And so the holomorphic involution is these are the, these are the fixed points uh, which locally look like all three z of the Clavier go to minus z, and this is the locus of where the reflection is z to minus z, and the other two z one to minus z one, and the two z three of the Clavier uh, are untouched. So there are two specific types of singularity. One of them is uh, is a set of loci which is counted here. The other is uh, the surface uh, which is the other number which is counted here. So this number is the same. It's 252. Uh, if that's good, no. I, probably, I don't remember. I have five more minutes or something, right? Yeah. Uh, where was I? Sorry. Now I have to go back. Go back. Here. So, what we actually want is, I mean, let alone all the details that I just discussed, the horrible details. We really want. And bulk to be small. We want all the flux that we can afford to use for the throat for the ZZ breaking, and we want uh, the Calabriao have almost no end bulk. Uh, that would make us more happy than the other way around. And now uh, the question is will bulk flux with a small head pull end be able to stabilize all construction model? Right? The head pull convection, in fact, claims exactly the opposite. The people have people claim exactly this, what we want. It's not what you will get. Namely, the claim is that if some flux vector stabilizes a large number n of common structure moduli, then this n flux induced by, the, by this flux will be larger than alpha some constant over one times n. So the more moduli you want to stabilize, the more the head pole induced by the three form flux you will be. And now this conjecture comes in variant. There's a refined version where people claim they know the number here. Uh, there is um, versions that you may or may not require in this context that the Calabriao is stabilized at a smooth point. I mean, it maybe it will not actually not hold if you allow the Calabriao to be stabilized at a singular point. For example, where some conifold points will be stabilized at shrine through five, which, however, is not the bad. And then there's variants of whether or when, uh, not to require that this N of the moduli you stabilize is really the maximal end, I mean, it's H21. Uh, or you just want to do this is for strong and deep. Growth. So, in fact, uh, there are eight different conjectures, right? Two by two by two. And people are not, and some of them, the strongest one is to take all the strongest of the radio rules out. There are some counter examples already. And it's, of course, also unclear what it means at large end. I mean, there are counter examples for collaboration with few modular. 
so, so it's known that if you have Kalabiao with one or two construction models that increase on flux, you can actually stabilize this one or two construction model. Line. The claim is that a very large number for the Kalabiao that really make up the, the typical Kalabiao is order 100 from the construction model. Line. This will not be. Um, so, what are the, arg so the arguments, in fact, in support of the convection? In my opinion, are relatively weak. So, so one argument is based on K3 times K3 example, but there you have a particularly simple factor of Curie factors. Uh, other examples, uh, then there, is, there are example analyses, or even, even proofs, in fact, in fact uh, uh, by, by Thomas again, uh, at large complex structures, in the extreme large complex structure limit, where, however, again, the structure of the theory becomes particularly simple. So um, all this rests on simple form of period, but uh, my, my personal argument against this conjecture, why I'm skeptical, is that really the main argument why I can stabilize or, or modulize uh, relies crucially on the complicated form of period. Namely, we have this expression uh, for the uh, continue breaking F term. It's, it's basically the condition for the being of the minimum. And there are any equations for invariable. And this generic function, these periods are, you know, horrible expressions with a uh, series of exponentials. So there's actually, uh, you expect only discrete solutions. In other words, all moduli are generically stabilized. So maybe in the I mean, it's unclear why you would expect that. Now, I'm still personally worried for the following reason. This tetrable conjecture could still be true. I also would say in, in, in spirit for the following reason. It could be that you generically have these discrete solutions, but actually there are no solutions in the physical domain of that. In other words, the flux potential for the complex structure model could be such that you're driven to a runaway to the multiplication or to singularities of a type which are too bad to be physically controlled. I mean, the actual model is destroyed because you're driven either to extremely large complex structure or to singular stage. That I cannot rule out. And um, so an interesting final point is uh, that the set rule convection, which in chance is maybe not the, not the only, but an important part of the struggle for or against the landscape, uh, can be made mathematically more precise uh, because it can, can be given a hot theoretic formulation. So uh, this, Statement dw equals zero, which was the, the, the naive field theorist approach to minimizing the potential, as a precise uh, statement in the sense that this uh, flux g, g3, I called it before, uh, the complexified version of this flux, actually uh, lives only in h21 plus h03. It has no, no component of, 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 of the, uh, uh, the other uh, four. And together with, of course, h3 and h3. Uh, being uh, in, uh, integral uh, homology. And also, uh, this n flux, this, this integral product, uh, this integral of the product of H3H3 H3 has to be a fixed number. So there is a that set of conditions which together uh, will define for you this uh, more more physics way of saying what the minimum is purely uh, in, in, uh, in H3. And uh, so then you can. Are talking about uh, uh, what Johannes and Peter calls the Doozy flux lattice. So, all flux choice is satisfying the above conditions. Uh, we can uh, denote them uh, like, like this. So, this is uh, um, these are the points which, which as, I, as I said before, uh, satisfy these uh, three statements here. And so then uh, we can uh, we can say and and uh, this is of course uh, true for a given value of this activilaton and the construction of the there. And then so the definition would be that the Zunzi local in the space of the modular of the Bial are those uh, values of s and z. Z is that that i from that one to that n. Um, this is hyperbolic plane, this is the modular phase of the uh, such that the rank of this flux lattice is larger than zero. In other words, all points at which you can be stabilized by a, by a flux structure. 
uh, then uh, the number of stabilized moduli at such points is the co-dimension of uh, this submanifold of the uh, uh, moduli space. And to the proposal then, or the, one of the forms of the proposal which one can uh, state, which which uh, one of the paper is that, uh, sorry, I should mention that of course there's also work here in I mean, very related work by Raoul Valandro by Thomas Grimm again before. So the, so the proposal would be that uh, the precise temporal conjecture that you take this co-dimension, i.e. the number of stabilized moduli, divide by the set code of the corresponding flux, and then you maximize over all fluxes. And you say that you can never get to large than one over alpha. So this is the a form of the set code conjecture. And the fine point is now what exactly the co-dimension, how we define the co-dimension. Proposal there by Johannes is that to take the risky co-dimension. And uh, this means that actually uh, fields stabilized by higher potential terms do not count. So you really, so, so, so uh, it's kind of a compromise suggestion, because it means the head volt conjecture can be true, uh, but not deadly for physics, because uh, many moduli remain unstabilized in the sense that they remain massless fields, but they still have a potential quarter or higher in the sense uh, the world is not running away in that direction. So, but that may be, I don't know, this is too technical. I wanted to uh, advertise Johannes recently, his nice work on this. Maybe you can, <laughs> if questions come, about, come up to this slide, I, I will have to <laughs> refer to Johannes to defend. <laughs> uh, I think I will not be able to defend well enough, I guess. Uh, which brings me to the summary. So, uh, three sentences. So, some of the most pressing issues in establishing a realistic string landscape have to do with higher dimension operators in general. So this, this text that what we usually study in the KVL context is the only leading order and that there are very well-defined corrections which are really dependent on the details and the metrics beyond just the which uh, So that, of course, you don't want to deal with it. You really want to go in a situation when these terms are not important rather than calculate them, at least with your mathematical mind first. Uh, this is possible. But uh, then one needs to go to geometries with a large negative set Q, which also is a problem and probably fundamentally limits. And uh, a related issue, a related critical issue is that can one stabilize many moduli by a flux with a limited set pool, i.e. a flux which does not require to be uh, which is also an open and interesting question. All right, thank you very much. That's it. So are there any questions? You sure? If there are no question or comment, uh, we're ready for, oh, okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, so this is a very naive question. Um, so looked at from far away, as a mathematician, um, observing the string landscape and the swampland over many, many years. Um, in some sense, it looks like because it's difficult to know what all Calabia manifolds are, what all Calabia moduli look like, um, we're trying to replace the physical questions of finding a unique compactification space with finding properties, maybe Hodge theoretic properties, um, of Calabian manifolds in general, and and drawing conclusions then using using Hodge theoretic methods. I mean, this is just big picture. Okay, if you flip that around, though, I'm just wondering, can we modify our mathematical expectations for what Calabian geometries could exist based on optimistic physical scenarios, Hodge theoretically? I mean, I way back when. <laughs> Uh, this has always been an issue of, of could there be Calabia moduli spaces of one dimension that are of genus bigger than zero? I don't know. <laughs> oh, but is this the kind of question that maybe we could start turning around into a uh, to feedback into the... the I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure that I fully understand that. Maybe, maybe that, like, put it that way. 
So um, I think the generic expectation that there will be a large landscape and many solutions and development for the real world is still there, but it is attacked by skeptics people who I have higher tech models justified on the basis of us not being able to produce a single example. So if you have a Calabiao, where for some reason, I mean, and, and okay, we know that the stable light and modular in a, in, a, in a large Calabiao with many cycles is a computationally hard problem. Right? It's a hard in the sense that we cannot hope to solve it. That's a good point, right? So if you're, maybe you're saying that, let us look for specific models for concrete Calabiao, where for some reason, I am able to explicitly produce uh, that flux number, stabilize the flux, find W0, uh, maybe not find, maybe in the future even find the metric. I don't know. But in a, in, in a so if you if you find models which avoid a problem which I maybe have not emphasized enough, namely the problem of explicitly stabilizing the modular, right? If you beat the equation, I mean, I, I didn't emphasize enough. This looks innocent, but if you have uh, 150 Z, it's completely undoable in this integral condition. If you find it, but it can be doable in special cases. If you find it to be hours where this is doable, uh, things can suddenly look much, much better. Is yeah. that the question? Well, not really. So so I think it's not less a question than a comment. Um, I feel like the problem of, of finding Calabia compactification spaces with specified properties has motivated the field tremendously from the early days. But my own sense is that we're only at the tip of the iceberg. Uh, that that we, we don't really have a sense that any one construction of Labia manifolds is the construction. Um, and so the great virtue of the techniques coming out of Hodge theory um, is that they provide absolute universal constraints on what could exist. Um, That's also interesting. You, you, you mean you could prove, for example, that we are not, we, are not, we don't need to struggle because, because it's 250 somewhere, but because, because it's a limit. Yeah, it's a tricky yeah so, so I, I, you know, I'm not sure this would, this approach necessarily uh, I mean, I would say from from my perspective, the 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 transmission of questions of modular stabilization into Hodge theoretic questions was a good move, because we simply don't know about the compact Calabiao spaces and, and their modular spaces. We don't know enough. We have lots of examples, millions and millions of examples, but we have no idea whether that's all, right? So, um, but what I'm wondering is whether the field is mature enough. To have the mathematics, the geometry um, of those kind of foundational questions now informed by predictions from physics. So I'm, what I'm hoping is that what will come out of this is okay. Physics says for some kind of consistency, there's a very strong Hodge theoretic constraint, possibly having to do a certain mix of integral structures, and then we can turn that around into a question of construction of Calabi house. So that is. This is a this is more of just a general comment of where I, I, I hope see. maybe okay. Okay. we'll we'll go. Can the microphone? Yeah. Well, I think that's generally true, but it's also very difficult because the, the physics conjectures are not always formulated in a way which nicely translates into mathematics. So one has to be very careful to pick the right. Uh, point of view on these conjectures and then translate them into mathematics. I will show you one conjecture which came from physics, this translated into mathematics and turned into mathematical theory. But uh, some of the other swampland conjectures, there are kind of quite a few now at this moment, but it's not so easy necessarily to translate them into, uh, say, Hodge theory. But, but, but I mean, my point of view, that's a very fruitful avenue because then at the end of the day, at least you can prove it in this setting. And then of course, uh, in physics, you're not certain that these are the only options. So there could be much more beyond that. I mentioned kind of other correction and so on. But at least within these Hodge theory settings, you should be able to prove these things eventually, like the pet book. And, and, and what, I'm, what, what I'm optimistically hoping for is input from physics that will constrain the, the possible uh, proposals for the possible Calabia geometries and the modules. I mean, our, the, the, the depth of our ignorance when it comes to that is pretty much the same as it was 20 years ago. <laughs> we gotta go? Yeah. Um, all right. I'll see you in.
10:45. Yeah, 10:45.